video to go through. everybody. Good morning, everybody. We're going to wait just another minute or so to see if more people join in because it's not quite 10 o'clock. We're getting there in a second and then we will introduce our speakers. Paul and Annette, I see that you're on. Good morning. I know that many seniors are probably on and they're, they're probably not looking at the camera piece and that's okay. Once you can hear our voices, that's all that matters. We have some fantastic speakers for you today and we're very excited to be able to bring conversations and coffee virtually. Who'd have thought, Betsy, six months ago that the two most untechnologically educated people in Oral Park would be here uh, presenting live <laughs> <laughs> through a webinar. And here we are. Freaking Frank. <laughs> we're, ready. we're ready for coffee and conversation to come back in real life. And we're thinking in August. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. That all depends. We're ready on to see everybody there. again. All right, you roll it on there. Go ahead. Okay. We'll go ahead and start. All right. Our seniors are very punctual and it is exactly 10 a.m. Okay, here we go. Well, welcome everybody. This is our fourth online virtual coffee and conversations. And if you missed us last month, we spoke with Gwendolyn Stirk, which is an attorney that talked about second marriages. So if you guys missed that for some reason, you could go back to uh, the Orland Fire Protection District Facebook page or to Ashley and Companion Home Care Facebook page and see that video that you might have missed last week or last month, just so you know. And actually it was one of the senior couples that come to conversation and copy that I think did remarry and ran into some challenges and they actually asked for that topic, but I noticed they weren't on that day. So we'll be able to bring that to them for sure. Okay. So today our guest speakers are Officer Steve Kois and Officer Carrie Kelly Vallon. Let me first introduce Officer Kois over here on our left. Um, Officer Kois has been part of the Orland Park Police Department or a police officer for 13 years. He currently works for the Orland Park's DARE officer. His job comes with being um, a DARE officer and community relations. He is one of the officers that sets up and participates in coffee with a cop, cookout with a cop, and all those related events. Officer Kelly is a police officer with Orland Park for eight years, and she is Steve's partner as well. And she is also involved in community relations. So let's welcome Officer Kois and Officer Valen. Now, just before we begin, real quick, uh, we're going to take ourselves off video. And to any of the seniors that are listening in, we would ask that if you have any questions for either of the officers, that you hold those questions till the end. There's a little chat box that you can type your question in if you're so inclined. And if you can't do that and you are able to navigate to raising the hand emoji, little symbol, do that. And then what we will do is we'll come back and we will come to you individually and take you off audio so that we can hear you. Okay, so without further ado, we're gonna take ourselves off video and we will let uh, our beautiful two great officers, the Orland Park Police Department, take it away. Good morning, everybody. Um, today we're gonna talk about just some of the uh, scams that we've seen in our town and throughout our careers that usually target the... I'm muted. All right, I'm back. Um, the first scam that we're gonna go over is going to be the gypsy ruse burglary, commonly referred to as just a ruse burglary. Basically, the way this scam goes is someone at random will come knock on your door. They might say, uh, hey, I'm from the water department, or can I take a look at your roof? I think it might need to be replaced. Or they might try to tell you about some sort of panic-inducing event, like, oh, there was water in your neighbor's basement. 
I need to check out your house to make sure you're not getting flooded either. Um, what these people will do is they work in teams. So one person will come up, they'll talk to you and say, hey, I need to look at this. Why don't you come with me? I want to show this to you. While they have you distracted, while you're paying attention to them, another person will come into your house, probably go into your bedroom or wherever they think that you're gonna keep money, other valuables, and they will basically just steal from you. Um, it only takes a couple of minutes. Um, they're in, they're out, they are highly coordinated, like this is their job, they're, they're good at it. Like I'd wish they'd put their energy towards something a little better to help them, you know, have legitimate jobs, but this is what they do. They have constant communication with each other. They have walkie talkies to let each other know where you're at in the house so they know where they can go. Um, the main thing to look out for with these bruised burglaries is if someone, let's say, says, hey, can I take a look at your roof? Well, you didn't call anyone out there for that. So they probably have something bad in mind for you. If anyone's cold calling you about some type of home repair, don't trust them. Don't even answer the door. Now, I've also handled these ruse burglaries where they will say, oh, I'm from Orleans Water Department. And honestly, they're going to look the part. They're going to be very kept up. They're going to be dressed well. They're going to have homemade badges. They're going to look 100% official. And you're going to think, well, this person looks like they're from the water department, so come on into my house. But if Orland Park Water Department or whatever town you're from needs to contact you, needs to get in your house for anything, and usually they never need to get into your house, they're going to contact you the day before to let you know, hey, we're going to send somebody out. You will have contact with someone from the village to say, hey, someone's coming out here, be prepared for this person. Again, if someone's coming to you out of the blue, they probably have bad intentions in mind. Um, the main way that these people get into the house is, well, they're good talkers. They will talk their way into your house and before you even know what's going on, they're in your basement telling you about something that you had no idea was a problem because it's not. So one thing that we do in Orland Park to try to combat this is we kind of stagger our shifts. We will let squad cars go out a little bit earlier before their shifts just to patrol the neighborhoods and look for these people. Because like I said, committing these types of crimes are these people's jobs. So they know in this town, this is when the shifts change. So there's not gonna be a lot of police officers on the street. So like I said, we know when these things do happen, it's usually in warmer weather because that's when most seal coating, roof repair, um, whatever kind of repair you can think of, goes down. So they'll usually shut down the second it gets cold out, but during the summer months, you do have to look out for this. And this happens everywhere. <clears throat> for those of you that live in Orland Park and think it doesn't happen here, it does. We had a report of someone trying to pull this off a week or two ago. Now in Orland Park, our, we have the Orland Park Police Facebook page, and we're usually good at updating that pretty quick, and we'll put pictures of these people up. So following your local police department's Facebook page would be a good idea just so you can see what's happening in town and who the people are committing the crimes in town. And again, while I do explain a lot of this stuff, I'm sure a lot of you are thinking, of course I'm going to see this coming. Like there's no way I would let anybody in my house, but I've handled plenty of these in my time as a police officer. And a few times I even had to convince the victim of one of these bruised burglaries hey, listen, just do me a favor. Please go check your bedroom and they'll keep arguing with me. No, 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 they were here to fix this and they just took a look at something and they left. No, please go take a look. And it turns out that that person was the victim of a burglary. So <clears throat> whatever you do in the door for these people, because like I said, they're smooth talkers. They're going to get their foot in the door. Then all of a sudden they're in your basement while someone else is stealing from you. If you do see someone suspicious, like in the village of Orland Park, you need a badge to solicit anybody. So if someone's cold calling you, knocking on your door, asking you about some repair, whether it be windows, roof, whatever, give the police department a call. Let us come out here, let us figure out what's going on. Like worst case scenario, they do work for the village, they just didn't get the communication out, we'll be able to figure that out. Um, in the other way, it's someone who's there to commit a crime and now we know who they are. So. Like I said, just 
if someone is there and you didn't call them to be there, it's automatically suspicious. Give your local police department a call. Um, the next scam we are going to talk about are online purchases and my partner, Officer Carrie Kelly, will be talking about that. Hi everyone. If I can just add to the end of uh, what Officer Coy said there, a lot of times uh, I go to these Bruce burglary calls too and often I hear that uh, uh, the victim didn't want to call us because they felt that they'd be bothering us. It is quite literally our job to be bothered. Please call us. I would rather come out and find out it was nothing than find out we could have done something at the time. So please call us if you see something suspicious, say something, give us a call. But uh, on to online purchasing scams. So a lot of what we're gonna talk about going forward is fraud scams. Fraud scams are very prevalent and just to show you how prevalent they are, I found a stat on the uh, Consumer FTC website. From January 1st of this year to June, Illinois alone has had over 2,000 reports to the FTC about consumer fraud. And that has totaled in $2.28 million in loss. Uh, nationally, that's over 100,000 FTC reports and that has totaled to $69.2 million in loss. So that just shows you how, how prevalent these, these crimes are. They know what they're doing, just like the Roost burglary crimes, they're skilled at what they're doing and they're making a lot of money off of it. So they're gonna keep doing it. So we wanna give you tools to help you prevent from being victims. Online purchasing scams can be seen through your email, through social media. Uh, sometimes these come in as vacation scams. Uh, simply, if a deal is too good to be true, it probably is. No one's gonna offer you a trip to the Bahamas for a week and say you're staying in a luxury hotel for you know, less than $100 a day. If someone calls you and says, hey, I got this great vacation deal for you, and they're trying to force you to do it right away, that's probably a red flag. No one's gonna say, hey, you have to purchase this within the next minute or this deal goes away, right? So that's probably a big red flag on those type of online scams. A lot of online scams you might see through social media. Sometimes your friend's social media gets hacked. I've seen this happen to my own friends and all of a sudden they're selling these really expensive sunglasses for next to nothing. And it just seems weird to me. It's what they've referred to as clickbait. They want you to click on it and then they can start getting viruses onto your computer and getting your information. Or sometimes it'll redirect you to a website where it says, okay, you wanna purchase these, these sunglasses for a really cheap price. That's fantastic. Let's start entering all your information. No online company, Nike, Apple, anything like that is gonna ever ask you to put your bank account routing number or something like your social security number just to make a purchase. So please, if you see anything like that, stop doing that right away. I do a lot of online shopping. I like to shop online, it's my thing. I've never ever had to put my bank routing number or social security number. Once I see that on any link I might've accidentally clicked, I immediately get out of it. You need to get out of it right away. Um, again, like I said, if these are too good to be true, they, they probably are. And if they ask you to pay in gift cards, they might be also a scam as well. We're going to get into a little bit more about these gift card scams and how they work. But if it's a company like saying they're from Apple and they want a gift card from Walmart, then it's probably a scam because Apple's not going to take a Walmart gift card. And the thing about gift card scams is we can't trace that money once it's gone. So that's why they like to use gift cards in a lot of these different scams to say, oh, we got your money, but now you can't trace it. So things I want you to look out for. If you see a promotional advertisement for a company that you're unsure of, something you haven't heard of, check it out. I do this all the time. I see advertisements on social media. I've never heard of the company, but the product looks great. I'll go to Google, whatever, whatever web browser you use, and I'll type in the company name and I simply type in scams, complaints, reviews of the company, and then I get all these, all these results back. And you can start reviewing, does this company pay you back? Does this company give you the product? How does this company do returns? And if you start seeing a lot of negativity towards the company, it's probably going to be a bad company to work with. I, I had a family member that just fell victim to one of these online social media scams. She saw an advertisement scrolling through her Facebook page. She clicked on it, she loved the product but she didn't really review the company at all. And now she's about a month out of paying them and they took her money and they ran and they don't, they don't have a product to give her. So please be cautious of these fake businesses that do often pop up on social media pages. Don't click 
any links or from emails or text messages if you're unsure. A lot of companies out there or a lot of these offenders out there try to make their emails look real. They try to make it look like it came from Apple or it came from Nike or it came from a reputable company. And they do a really good job of making it look real. If they're selling you something and you're just unsure, go directly to the company's website without clicking that link that they sent you through an email. Just go back onto your web browser, go to Apple, find out if they're actually selling that product. You can call Apple, find out if they're actually selling that product. Hey, Apple, I got this email. They're gonna, they're gonna help you out. Don't ever click on a link that you just feel isn't right. Especially if they come in through text messages too, because sometimes you'll get text messages that way. Um, click on this link to purchase, purchase whatever item that, that they're trying to sell you. And in the end, you get redirected to a website that tells you to put in all your personal information. And now they have all your information and they can create accounts in your names and get bank accounts in your names. And that, that becomes a whole problem that nobody wants to deal with. And say no to anyone who insists that you have to purchase this right away or you have to buy a gift card, especially if they tell you, hey, leave your house, go to Walgreens, get this gift card, come back and give me the number off of it. Those are big red flags and those will tell you right away that these are online purchases you don't want to make. Another online purchase I want to discuss real quick is a lot of people use websites such as Craigslist where you can sell your items and typically that means you got to meet someone somewhere, right? Never have someone meet you at your house or never go to somebody's house. Always dictate that you want to go to somewhere safe. We allow people to come in our parking lot. They do this all the time. I see them in our parking lot every day, exchanging items, selling items. It's safe. We have cameras. This is where we advise everyone to come. Please don't ever let someone convince you to go somewhere you're not comfortable with, like their house, like an abandoned parking lot. Always insist to come to the police department. If they don't want to come to the police department, I would say that they're suspicious and you probably don't want to work on selling anything to them or buying anything from them. Um, and I think next we're going to do IRS scams. That's correct. All right. The next group of scams that we're going to talk about are near and dear to my heart, everybody's heart the scam phone call. Now, most of the time it's someone calling about your car warranty that you, how do you know about my car? <laughs> or for some reason recently, like I'm getting like Medicare updates. I, I don't know why, but some of these scams also are people pretending to be the IRS. They will say you owe thousands of dollars in back taxes. They say there's a warrant out for your arrest. They'll say that the Orland Park police are coming to get you. And they'll let you know that you owe us $3,000, but if you can get me $900 in iTunes gift cards, we'll call it even. That is clearly a scam. And yet, it works. Why is that? Pressure. They say you're under arrest. The second you hear you're under arrest on the phone, people start to kind of freak out, their anxiety goes up and they think, well, I don't want to be under arrest. Uh, how, how, how do I fix this? And then they go out and they get the iTunes gift cards. Um, I went to irs.gov, their website, and they have a whole list of what to look for with these scams. Um, I'll go over a couple of them, but if you want to check yourself, feel free to do so. That site's going to be a lot more comprehensive than what I'm going to talk about. Um, first off, the United States government doesn't take iTunes gift cards as currency. They just don't. Um, another interesting thing that I learned while I was looking at that website is, is the IRS, like these scammers, the people who are pretending to be the IRS will always say, oh, the local police department's going to come and get you. The IRS doesn't need the local police department to come and get you. They have their own enforcement branch that can make arrests. So that's another sign that it's going to be a scam. And like I said, a lot of this stuff, you guys are going to think, oh, this is common sense. It's once someone says, hey, you're under, we're going to arrest you for this. You're in big trouble. People kind of, they freak out a little bit and they might do stuff that they normally know is not wrong, that they know better. And then once they stop and think about it, it's like, wait a minute, I think, I think I just got scammed. Um, another Scam that we see, this, is, this mainly goes after businesses and business owners, but it can also happen to uh, seniors. 
someone will call pretending to be like a utility company. Like the one I've seen mostly is ComEd. Someone will call from ComEd pretending that they're 100% official and that they, that you owe them $900. And if you don't pay right here, right now, they're going to shut your power off. Now for store owners that crushes their store, crushes their business, they're done. And no one wants their power shut off. But in reality, there's a long process before ComEd is going to shut your power off if it does get to that. So you will know well before that phone call that if ComEd was legitimately going to shut your power off, you would know well beforehand. Um, the last the last scam that we usually see over the phone that is definitely targeted at seniors is going to be the, the grandchild scam. What happens is someone will call you, they say, hey, um, your grandson, granddaughter has been arrested in a foreign country. Usually it turns out they'll say like Mexico or something like that. And they'll say they're under arrest for DUI, CDP, whatever. And they need a thousand dollars to get out of jail. And then in some cases, they'll put a male or female on the phone and just say, grandma, I need the money. Please help me get out of jail. The times that I've dealt with this, where it's worked, the people who have been scammed out of the money have said it sounded exactly like my grandchild. It sounded exactly like my grandson, my granddaughter. Now, do these people have any idea what your grandson or granddaughter sound like? No, no, they don't. But again, these scammers, they want to put a lot of pressure on you. So you don't have time to make good decisions. What happens in these situations is once you hear your grandson, your granddaughter is in jail, you immediately think, what can I do to get my grandson or daughter out of jail? How can I fix this? And then you don't really even stop to think about, is this my grandson or daughter on the phone? Because I'm thinking about getting them out of this predicament. Again, all of these phone scams, they're designed to put a lot of pressure on you. They want, they want you to be thinking about everything else besides what they're asking and just kind of go along with it. Um, I don't know who honestly takes like iTunes gift cards or Target gift cards as payment unless they're trying to scam you out of something. So again, just take a deep breath, think about it for a second. And once you do think about it, <clears throat> you'll come to the conclusion that, yeah, this doesn't sound right. I'll, I'll hang up and I'll contact whoever and I'll figure this out. Again, if it's ComEd calling you, um, go on the internet, call ComEd off the uh, phone number on there. Don't ever trust the phone numbers that these people give you. And you can figure it out from there. Um, I think that's all I've got with this portion of our scam talk. My partner is going to talk about computer repair scams. So, Gary, take it away. Those, uh, those IRS scams that Officer Coy's talked about, those are so common that uh, I would venture to guess I probably two or three times a month get a voicemail from someone claiming they're from the IRS and they're coming to arrest me. Um, so a lot of things I tell people when they come to the police department or call us to ask us questions about these, these calls they're getting. If I'm getting them as a police officer, we're all getting them. Uh, they try to fool anyone. So just please don't answer those phone calls and, uh, or don't call them back because a lot of times they'll leave a, a phone number for you to call back and they try to scare you on those voicemails and say, hey, I'm coming to arrest you. Um, my, uh, my grandmother was a victim of the, um, or almost became a victim of the, the, uh, the scam with, uh, uh, saying you're going to jail because uh, someone called and said my husband was in jail and uh, she told it, she completely believed it. Luckily there was a family at the house and they stopped her from giving any money. But I have had com people come into the police department and actually have an envelope full of $5,000 in cash ready to send it to whatever address they told them to send it to. And it will be an address that it, it, it'll be someone's house in the middle of nowhere and they'll pick an address, they'll know it's getting delivered and they'll steal that out of the mailbox and they'll disappear. So it won't necessarily be that person's address that they're giving you is, is really the offender. They're just trying to pick anywhere they can that they can easily pick up this envelope and disappear. But to go into computer scams, um, 
I have dealt with these a lot. These are scams that they tell you that you need to repair your computer. Um, you might get these in a phone call. You might get tech support scammers from claiming they're from Apple or Google or Microsoft or one of the big um, tech companies out there. And they're gonna say, hey, we noticed that there's a problem with your computer. You must have some kind of virus. Um, they're gonna ask you to get on your computer and go to a certain website so they can have you type some stuff in to gain remote access to your, to your computer. And then it can start controlling your computer. You'll see your mouse moving around and everything like that. Um, they're going to tell you they're going to run a diagnostic test, which means they're going to try to detect viruses on your computer. And lo and behold, they're going to find one, even though there really isn't one. And they're going to tell you, hey, you need to pay us to fix it. You need to give us your credit card information. This might go back to, hey, you need to give us your bank account information, your social security. Again, no company no online purchases you make, no repair company you deal with is ever gonna ask you for your social security or bank information, routing information. So that's, that's a big red flag right there. And no company is ever going to call you and say, hey, we noticed a problem with your computer. There's no way Apple or Microsoft or Google suddenly just know that you in Orland Park have a problem with your specific computer and you must have a virus. There's no virus detection, detection software that just, that just has Apple or Google call you like that. So that would be a big red flag. If you get a phone call like that, just hang up, hang, hang up on them immediately. Nothing good is gonna come from that phone call. Another way they do these repair scams is if you maybe clicked on a link in the past that was a bad link, uh, it will be able to allow them to access your computer and send a pop-up warning. And they're gonna make it look like whatever virus software you have on your computer, they're gonna make it look official and they're gonna say, hey, there's a virus that appears on your computer. The only way you can get this off your computer is by calling this phone number on them and they'll put it on the bottom of the pop-up. The big red flag there is that no tech company, no virus software company is going to say, hey, call this phone number. Any legitimate virus software you have on your computer is going to try to run tests to get that virus off of there. If it can't, that's when you call the virus company. That's when you call your computer company, such as Dell or Apple, and ask them for advice. You can go to Best Buy and you can go to the Geek Squad. I use them from time to time when I have problems with my computer and they'll get it off your computer or they'll help you find ways to get it off your computer. Never ever call a phone number that comes up in a pop-up that says, hey, we're your virus software detection company. We noticed something wrong with your computer, please call us. It's immediately gonna go back to the people who call on the phone and they're gonna start asking you for your credit card information and your bank account information and your social security account information. So that is, that's another big red flag. And they're gonna make it look real. Like I said, it's gonna be logos that you're gonna say, oh, I see this logo all the time when my virus software says, hey, you need to update me. So it's gotta be real. But just like they can send fake emails that make it look like they come from Apple or make it look like they come from Nike, they can also make it look like they come from your virus detection company. Uh, another way they do this is by online ads. So let's say you do legitimately have a virus on your computer. You open up one day and, oh darn, I must have clicked on something and now I have a virus and my actual virus software is telling me I do so. And you're trying to figure out, well, where can I take my computer to get it fixed? So you go to Google and you type in, you, you type in something for how to repair my computer. Well, they also create ads, these tech scammers, and you need to use caution when you're going to these websites. Just like I said with online purchases, make sure you vet the website type it in, type the name in, type it with, you know, the tech scam name of the website and put scams and then reviews and see what, see what comes back. This might not be a real company. And if you do in fact choose a company like this and you're going along the way and you're trying to get it serviced and then they start asking you those suspicious questions of, you know, well, to, to make your appointment, I'm going to need your social security number or I'm going to need your bank account information. Again, that's a big red flag. No one's going to ask you for that information to fix your computer or do any type of online purchasing. So things you wanna know is you won't get contacted by the phone from these companies, okay? You won't get an email or text message. They're not going to know you have a virus on your computer unless you yourself go to them and tell them. Security pop-up companies, like I said, they're going to look extremely real. So what should you do if you become a victim? Because I have seen this happen before. If you pay a tech scammer, um, because like we were talking with the IRS scams, they make these seem really real. So it, people fall victim to them. Don't feel bad if you do. So if you do end up paying with your credit or debit card, call your bank right away. Tell them what happened. They understand that these things happen. The banks deal with these fraud, this fraud all the time as well. Tell them what happened. Tell them the payment you made and that you want to stop it. 
And my advice would be to immediately cancel that credit or debit card. And then you also want to make a police report too after that. But my first thing I would do would be to call my bank to get that payment stopped. Uh, if you paid in gift card, you can try to call the gift card company, see if they'll help you. A lot of times they can't, but uh, again, gift cards are going to be a big red flag. No one's going to ask you to pay in uh, an Apple gift card to a random company because that's how they take payment for their computer repairs. That's not at all how they'll ever take payment. So if any computer repair company says you need to pay in gift card, then that's a big red flag. Don't deal with them. Um, if someone does gain remote access to your computer because you clicked on a link or because you called a phone number, I would shut down your computer right away. And this is where I would start looking into where I can take my computer to be fixed. And then if you're, if you do give out your passwords, cause a lot of times we'll ask for your computer passwords or passwords to your bank account or something like that. If you do give out your passwords, then stop that right away by changing all your passwords. And if you have a password that is the same for different accounts, I would change them all across the board. If you store your passwords on your computer, I know a lot of people like to do a little note section that says these are my passwords, then I would make sure I change all of those passwords because if they've gained access to your computer, they've already seen that and they know every website you've been on that you have an account that you need to change your password to. Uh, one more thing, if you become a victim to this, uh, they might feel that they can just keep victimizing you and keep coming back. So one thing they might do is they might call you up after you think you've had your computer fixed by them and say, hey, how do you like your service with us? And your answer is going to be no because your computer didn't get fixed and you didn't like it. So once you say no, they're going to try to sell you a fake refund. And by doing this, they'll say, well, now we need your bank account information to give you the refund. That's a big red flag. Or they'll send you a check and they'll say, well, you need to deposit it first. And I want you to deposit it, send us the money. And then they'll have you, they'll force you into sending that money before that check clears and then you're out the money. So these are the different kind of scams to look for when it comes to computer repair. They're very, they're very skilled at doing this. So just please use caution when you, when you see something like this happen. Sorry. <laughs> they know I'm coming up next. <laughs> All right, the last scam that I'm going to talk about, Officer Carrie Kelly is one more she's going to speak on, um, is one that kind of came to my attention recently. It's going to be, I'll just call it the love scam. Uh, some people, as they get older, they might get a little lonely and they might look for some companionship. Um, so they might go on websites like a, adult dating websites, like adult friend finder or sites of the like. Um, every time that someone starts a conversation with me as a police officer about I went to this website, that website, just looking to meet somebody, it ends in someone getting robbed. Either their house gets robbed or they get scammed out of a bunch of money. Um, the way these work is the people on the other side of these profiles, and you can get a profile picture off the internet, it's not that difficult, is they know that you're looking to forge some sort of emotional bond with somebody. So all they have to do is say a couple of the right keywords and pretend they care to form that bond with you. And then just a bunch of strange circumstances will start happening. Like, oh, um, I was in a car accident. I need a thousand dollars to fix my car. Sure, we can meet up after I get my car fixed. And then they'll get gift cards sent to them. Because yet again, what mechanic do you know that takes uh, Target gift cards or Amazon gift cards to fix a vehicle? Or uh, I'm not allowed to leave my house, so um, if you buy my mom an iPhone 11, I'll be able to go out, and then once she gets that iPhone 11, yeah, I'll definitely come out and I'll see you. It just keeps going on and on and on, and you have to keep giving more and more money without ever meeting this person. And they've already tried to forge that emotional bond with you, so you think, oh, well, I'm helping this person out. And you think, well, man, this person's got a lot of bad luck. I think if I just help them out, they'll they'll come out of this and they'll be really grateful to me. But again, it's just, it always ends with someone getting scammed out of a lot of money. And like with the IRS, uh, ComEd, um, this type of scam where you have to get, where you have to get um, gift cards and send them out to people. Um, what do the police do on our end? I'll be honest with you, there's not a lot we can do. The second you send that off, it gets routed through so many different email addresses, different countries, it's, we're probably not going to find it. And if a person does give you an address, an email address, it's not real. They can fix it to make it look as real as humanly possible, but 
it's not really them. So a lot, all those sites, well, most of the ones, I'll, and I'm, the ones I deal with when I hear them at my job, obviously those are always gonna be the bad ones because someone lost money. So honestly, I just would not trust those at all. If someone you just met is asking you for a thousand dollars, just think like, who does that? No one you really want to deal with. All right, that's all I've got on these type of scams. Officer Carrie Kelly has one more scam she wants to talk to you about, and then we'll go into um, just some resources you guys could use to help yourself or help some of your friends. So real quick, before I talk about the last scam, something I thought about while Officer Coyce was talking, a lot of these scams with the IRS um, that they use phone numbers, they can do something that we call spoofing a phone number where they make it look like it's coming locally, or they can even get so good where it makes it look like it's coming from someone you know. So like in these grandchild scams, they can make it look like it's really coming from your grandchild's phone. Um, we've had scams where they pretend to be maybe the Orland Park Police Department and they call you and say, hey, we're looking for donations. Well, the Orland Park Police Department, I can assure you, is never going to call you on the phone and look for donations. But they can spoof our number and make it look like it's coming from our non-emergency line and make you think that that's real. So those are things you want to look out for. If you start getting weird questions and maybe it appeared on your phone that your son is calling you and you answer. And one of the scams I've seen, they say, uh, I'm trying to buy this car and I need your social security number. Well, I don't know why anyone would need your social security number, but I've seen this happen multiple times. And um, it sounds like their son on the other phone. They expect it to be their son on the other end of the phone. If you get something like that, hang up right away and then call your son back He's going to answer his real actual phone number. Um, this, just because you call back the number they spoofed doesn't mean it's going to go to them. He's going to, he's going to answer the phone. You're going to ask him, are you buying a car right now? Do you need my social security number? And the answer is probably going to be no. So those are things to be on the lookout for. As, as we've gone out there to try to show how these, these scams happen, these offenders are trying to get better at it to fool you. So they're trying to find ways to, to change up their phone numbers to make it look like it's coming from legitimate people that you would know. So the last thing I want to talk about is COVID related issues and scams because when any, anything new pops up, scammers find a new way to get around those, right? And they want to find a new way to make money. So what's more popular right now than really COVID-19 and how can we scam people in using fear of COVID-19? So you're going to start seeing, I've already seen it. If you go to the consumer.ftc.gov website, they have a long list of companies that have been frauding people using fake advertisements to promote that their product cures COVID-19 or it's a prevention for COVID-19. We obviously have no idea what cures it or prevents it at this point. So no company can advertise that, but they, they are advertising it and selling their product and making money off of it. Um, asking for donations. No government agency is gonna come out there and ask you for donations. The, the CDC, the WHO, they're not coming, they're not calling you to say, hey, we need, we need you to donate some money because we really need to work on this cure. No one's calling you for that. They have the money to do that. They have the resources to do that. Nobody's gonna make these calls. So don't respond to any text or emails you might get. Again, they'll make these look real. They'll make them look like they're coming from the CDC or the WHO. So don't, so don't respond to any of these emails. Only go to the irs.gov website. If you, if you think that you uh, wanna learn some more information on these or the consumer.ftc website. Don't go to any other website that that they might send you. Uh, like all the other scams, don't get everyone your bank, don't get at, don't give anyone your bank account information, don't give out your your social security number or anything like that. Um, ignore anyone that might email or call you and say that we have an offer for a testing kit. These aren't gonna probably be FDA approved testing kits. So, and again, that's gonna be just a false advertisement. So I, be cautious about COVID-19 right now, obviously for the obvious reasons, but be also cautious about people that are gonna to try to scam you out of money by using COVID-19 as a fear tactic. And I think that is all the, uh, the scams we have to cover right now. Uh, like Officer Coyce and I referenced, the irs.gov is a good website to visit um, for those IRS scams. And consumer.ftc.gov is a website I like to give out because as you can see with COVID-19, scams, they change them up all the time. And we might not be seeing them in Orland Park yet, but nationally they might see them. And consumer.ftc.gov is going to have that information. 
So you can learn about scams as they go and as they change them. So it's a website that I would get familiar with and uh, keep up to date with. All right, before we move on to taking any questions, um, I just want to give out the website of plows.org. That's P-L-O-W-S dot org. Um, plows basically is a bunch of resources for seniors. Um, this might not be for you, but you might have a friend that might not be able to get around as well. Maybe can't take care of themselves as well as they once did. And it's, it's a hard conversation to have because some people have been on their own since they were very, very young. They've handled the worst problems in the world. And now it might be a little hard to admit, hey, I need some help. So going to plows is a great resource because they can set you up with people that can do a wide variety of things for you. Plows can help you out with uh, reporting, reporting elderly abuse. Um, it can help you apply for benefits that you are entitled to. Um, they can give support for caretakers. Let's say you are taking care of a parent or something like that. It, they can give you support for how to handle this. Um, <clears throat> They can also, they also offer care planning, planning that involves the whole family to help provide for the senior in your life, for the family member, um, assist with um, home delivered meals. They offer in-home services and they can also help out with uh, shared housing options. So that's plows.org, it's a resource. It's, it's usually where we go to try to find out if there's any issues that people are having with um, caretaking for the elderly. So Plows is a very, very good resource to take a look at. Not just for the police, but like I said, if you know somebody, you have a friend, you have a parent that might need some help, go to Plows. They've dealt with this a bunch and they can help you out with it. So with that being said, we will take some questions if there are any. Okay, so does anybody else have a question? If so, type it in the chat box. Otherwise, I'm going to ask a few questions that we came up with earlier. So our first one is, how do I recognize a scammer? Do they just look like us or should we be looking out for a certain type of person? I mean, is there a look that you guys can tell going into it? Like, oh yeah, I could see that they're a scammer. And how can we not see that if you can? Like, what do we look for in general? Like, as like a person that's coming up to scam you, they come up in all shapes, sizes. The way you recognize a scammer is, why is this person at my house for something I didn't call them for? Like, why are you here? There's no reason for you to be here. Okay. I try to put on like a bunch of high pressure tactics on you. That's someone who's trying to scam you. I am, I'm going to unmute Diana husband. Um, she's one of our senior advisory council members. I'm not sure if she's willing to share this story about how she was recently um, scammed. So if she's willing to share it, I would love for other people to hear it just so they know what really happened. You know, it did happen in this area. Diana, can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Do you want to share the story about your scam or are you not comfortable with that? I am very comfortable sharing it. It happened to me, it could happen to anybody. Go ahead, Diana, and share your story. And we're going to mute ourselves so there's no feedback. Okay. We were a uh, gentleman in door door, and uh, my husband said he recognized him. And then said that there was a problem with the plumbing uh, on the street. He wanted to make sure everything was good with us. So my husband let in and he wanted to put water on in the kitchen. My husband was over there with the gentleman and um, it didn't look like anyone was in the house. I was there coming down the stairs and a second person just walked in and he wanted to go home now and look downstairs in the basement to check the laundry type of thing. My husband went down with him, and the first person wanted me to check out the sink up in the kitchen, which I did not do. And because I did not do that, I saw a third person walk into the house and was starting to go upstairs. And I told her that person, and I said, no, 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 no. They all left. They got out there fast. Um, my husband did think he recognized the man, but did 
would come and knock at our door and gave us that Bruce story. Fortunately, the only thing that was taken was our garage opener that was sitting very near the entrance to our house, and that's already been taken care of. But that's what happened. So we feel good. We're okay, and the police were fantastic. And I think they were there with the five minutes of my calling them, and um, they came back. They were wonderful. That's my story. Thank you, Diana, for sharing that uh, with us. And perhaps when we come back to have a virtual or the, the non-virtual conversations and coffee, we'll have you share that in person with many of the other seniors because I certainly think that's worth explaining to them in person. Um, I do have a question also uh, for Kerry and uh, Steve. Have you had anybody in the Orland Park area complaining of suspicious people walking around the neighborhood and removing mail from people's mailboxes. We'll get that every once in a while. It's not as, it's not one of the top things we see a bunch, but yeah, it, it does happen from time to time. But like I said, it's, um, if someone does come up to try to remove your mailbox, that's just with all the technology out there, that's too much of a chance that someone's going to see your license plate, someone's going to see your face, um, someone might have cameras on their house, so we don't see it too much anymore. I'm not saying that it's never going to happen, but it's not one of the most common, common things we see, because we know that there's a lot of information, a lot of personal information in our mail, and if someone did feel that, they would have a lot of information on us. Yes, and the reason I asked you that is because I know that in January, uh, this happened to one of our customers um, with Ashling Home Care, and then Ashling Home Care actually just got scammed at myself. Yes, I'm putting up my hand. Uh, somebody just recently wrote a check from my company to themselves to the tune of $3,783, and the check just looked like the company checks that we use, and they were smart enough, of course, to go to uh, not my bank to have it cashed, so it did go through. However, you know, the good part of, of things like that happening, we have no way of, of knowing where they got that check from. Yeah. So I did hear back in January also the same thing happened. So we're just saying to the seniors to, to basically, and everything that you're both telling us today, you have to be super vigilant and always watching because there are, you know, things going on right now where people are desperate for money and with the COVID situation and things like that. So you know, point in case, I guess, you know, to communicate and, and uh, reiterate what you're both saying is that if it doesn't feel right, it probably isn't right. And that the Orland Park Police really are there for our seniors. And even if, if, it's, if it's a false alarm, it's better to call you guys to have you come out and check on it to be sure, right, than putting themselves in, in danger. Right. Do you have another and question there? Actually, before you get started, um, I just want to thank you for bringing that up. And one of the things that we see with some of these scams is people not reporting. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they're embarrassed. This happens to everybody. Like these scammers, like this is their job. Like they evolve. It's their job to try to get you separated from your money. And like I've had times where people will get my credit card through I don't know how, but it happens to everybody. So there's nothing to be embarrassed about. If it happens, let's report it. Let's get some information on it. And then at the very least, we can educate people on how to get this done and how to what to look out for and how to stop it. Yeah, I think I agree with Where's you, uh, Officer Coyce. I think, you know, I'm, I'm not embarrassed to share it, and that's why I shared it, because it's not something that I did wrong. As you said, and you hit the nail on the head, People who do these bad things are professionals. They, they, they have a full-time job planning and strategizing. They have their chart all plotted out. They know exactly what they're doing. And sadly, they know how to prey on, on, on well, I'm not a senior, but not yet. But point <laughs> case is that they know that they can get away with it, right? So, you know, everybody just needs to be a little bit more alert and a little bit more aware. And, and as we're speaking now, we have another question that just came in. Can I get into the mail thing real quick? Can yes. I add one to that? Um, one of the things we did see a spike with, it wasn't taking it out of people's 
Mm -hmm. But the suburbs saw a spike in people being able to get in all those blue mailboxes that you see on the street corner or in front of the, the, uh, the USPS store. Um, we're advising people if you have to mail something as inconvenient as can be, just go inside USPS and mail it personally. That way no one can get it. Um, somehow people were getting into this, somehow people had a key and they were doing exactly, I think what you said you were a victim of is they were getting these checks they were then washing them and then they were checking it, they were cashing it to themselves. And once they have that information, as you know, checks have your accounting number on it. So they can just keep doing it until you change that account or close that account. So that might be uh, maybe where that question came from, but we did see a spike of this in Orland Park and all the surrounding suburbs, northern suburbs too. Okay, spike in the last month or in the last couple um, of months? It was, it was more in the winter, spring time. We're still getting some reports here and there. Um, from maybe people who just didn't notice it. Some, some people don't check their bank accounts that regularly, um, but it was more back in, uh, in, in the winter and the spring, we were taking a lot more of these reports. Um, we did take them and then they get refer referred to uh, the Postal Service because it is their jurisdiction. Um, but we do take them, we help you guys out with um, closing your accounts and everything like that, all the information you're gonna need from there. Sure. But we just go inside the store and mail it. Um, that's going to be the safest way. I know it's inconvenient. It's inconvenient for me, but that's what I do now. Yeah. And for us too, any mail, you know, both personally or for the business, it goes straight to the post office. We don't actually use the mailbox at all. And then when we see our mailman coming in, we straight away go out and take the mail in because it's not just, you know, maybe checks that are in the mail. It could be personal information in there, letters to family members or whatever. And again, a perfect way for these scammers to know who you're writing to and who's in your family. So great information thank you for sharing that we have another question that just came in here and it says um is the nicor home solutions regarding outside water lines a scam so have you heard of that one i can't say i personally heard of that one i don't know uh what in particular that asking for on uh, the nicor i believe because we this came up in conversations and coffee several weeks ago i think what people are knocking on the door locally of, of seniors' houses and telling them that there's a problem with the water lines or with the gas lines and they need to get into their basement to check an issue regarding the meter or whatever outside. And then we all know that once Good they get him. inside, the rest that would be That would be a scam. Yeah. They need to make an appointment with you to do that and NICOR would have to call you directly. So if they're coming to your door, one, you need to get a permit to solicit in Orland Park. So you need to come to us and we do a little background check to make sure that you can actually solicit. So if they're soliciting and you ask them for a permit, then and they don't show you one, then I would shut the door and I would call us. And then two, if they're asking to get into your basement or your house at all, and they don't have any appointment with you, they never called you, I would shut the door and call us right away and, and, have, us, and have us check it out. Like, like we said, we'd rather check it out and find out it's really Nightcore. But I would doubt it's NICOR, actually. There's no reason they would need to get into your house um, without contacting you first. Right. And that's Someone shows up unannounced and says, I need to get in your house, probably a scam. Most Absolutely. likely. Absolutely. So even if you feel like you've seen them working in the area for something else for a little bit of maybe a few days, and then all of a sudden they were at your door, you shouldn't open your door and assume that right. they are exactly who they're saying they are. The right. people that do the ruse burglaries know this as well. Okay. They'll know something in the area that might, they might pull out a NICOR uh, name tag as opposed to a Orland, Orland Water because they're trying to lull you into a false sense of security. It's like, oh yeah, I saw a NICOR out here uh, yesterday. That seems legitimate. Come on in. It's and give us a call. And like uh, Officer Kerry Kelly said, our solicitors, they have big badges that say Orland Park all over them. If you don't see that, they're not there legally. Give us a call. And things to look for, if they're saying they're from a company like NICOR, they usually drive a truck that says they're from NICOR, right? You usually park that on the street. So kind of look around. Is that there? Or are they driving just a pickup truck that doesn't make any sense? Um, kind of like, again, with the Roost burglary scams. When, when they come to your door and they say we're with the village of Orland Park and we're with their public works, all of our public works drive red trucks and they all have the Orland Park symbol on the doors. So if you don't see that, that's a big red flag right there. No one's coming from NICOR or Comet or the Village of Orland Park with, without something on their car or their van or their truck that uh, 
says who they're from. Yeah, and just to that now, any of the seniors that are listening, the Orland Park non-emergency number, if you're not sure, is uh, 349-4111, correct? So if you're, you're, you're in doubt, please give the police department a call and let them come and do the investigation. And just don't open the door. If nobody has made that pre-arrangement or appointment with you, do not open the door and then call the non-emergency number at 708-349-4111. So this was great information that you shared with everybody yeah, today. I, I learned a lot. It's scary mm -hmm. that people are getting scammed at any age. I mean, is there anything we can do as citizens? Um, how can we lessen the risk of this happening to us? Just by um, following through before? Yeah, just like I said, most of these scams, they want to put a lot of pressure on you just to kind of make sure that you're not thinking about this stuff. Cause if you do step back and think about it, it's like, no, this is, this is ridiculous. Why would I do any of this? So just step back, think about it for a second. Like why would the IRS want target gift cards? Um, I didn't know my grandson or daughter was in Mexico or wherever. Why would they call me first and not their parents? So if you step back and think about it, you'll be able to figure it out on your own. Okay. This stuff's always going to be evolving, always changing. The more technology we have, the more types of scams are going to come our way. So like you said earlier, it's if it doesn't feel right, it's probably not right. If something doesn't feel right, give the Orland Park Police a call. Or at least like check that person. Like if someone says, hey, I'm from NICOR, we got to check out the water lines. Okay, hang out out there for a second. I'm going to give NICOR a call and see if this is legitimate. They'll be gone. Yeah. Okay. I wouldn't even open the door, you know, to, to even That's find out. If they haven't called me or sent me, I wouldn't, I just wouldn't take that chance. Yeah. You know, I just wouldn't. And if it has happened, don't feel embarrassed or upset about it. And make sure you're calling the police and make the report and make sure that word is getting out that this is happening in your area so it could be looked into. Yeah, people are doing these scams because they're successful at it. There's no reason. We can't help you with anything if you don't tell us about it. Right. I have one last question for you. You know, from the police side of things, do you see that the scams kind of run their course and then a new scam pops up? Do you see like, you know, the, the habitual ones that are used consistently and then one comes up and you're like, well, wow, there is a new one. Like, it's kind of like a trend, like fashion yeah. changes, right? Do you yeah, see that? that? Definitely. I mean, the IRS scam is always probably going to be around and that's going to become more prevalent around April when taxes are due, right? Um, they kind of die off a little bit, but uh, they're still they're still here in the other season. Is it just we get a lot more phone calls about hey I'm getting an IRS scam around that time? Um, but like I brought up the COVID nineteen related scams, we would have never seen those if we didn't have COVID nineteen. So they find a way to evolve. They find something that is big in the market at the time and they evolve with it. Um, I can't say that any of them are are really going away, but uh, they come in waves too. Um, you know, I, I sometimes wonder if they notice they're not getting away with this particular scam. So let me move on to another one. Right. And then we move on to another one and they just cycle through them. They'll come back to them. But I just wonder if they realize, okay, this one's not working for some reason. Maybe people are aware of it. So let me cycle to something else. Yeah. Well, if they're smart enough to figure it out the first time, they'll figure out something that will work eventually. Unfortunately. Yeah. Some of them do just kind of die out because they don't work anymore. Others evolve because technology gets, well, easily exploited. Great so, information. Yeah. My so, head is spinning with all of it, actually. We're going to have you guys, uh, if you will, uh, when, we, when we actually do our meetings in person again, we'd love you to come over and do this presentation again. I think it's very important for people in our neighborhood and in the area to know what's going on especially hearing it directly from you and most especially to highlight the fact that you do not need to be embarrassed and I I bet right. when you do come and you speak in person you'll hear quite a few stories oh we have and it's better when we get to have coffee and donuts with that story <laughs> together it's better to be together yeah <laughs> Well, we want to thank you so much for coming on today. You're more than welcome to hang around. If, if you're not busy, we're going to finish up with some other information in regards to conversations at coffee. And again, uh, from Betsy and myself, 
the information today was invaluable. Thank you for sharing and thank, thank you for you. spending the time. We really do appreciate you both. No thank problem. you so much we for having us. Thank you. Bye bye now. Bye. Bye. Okay, so on to the second part of the presentation today. Um, we've missed everybody not being able to do this um, in person. Many of the seniors that are on today, kudos to you for, for getting on. And we wanted to make sure that you're telling your friends so that your friends can virtually log on as well. So with that, we're continuing with the schedule that we've had in place for the year. So those of you that are listening that have the Coffee and Conversations flyer, um, next month, if you remember, uh, we had um, asked Dr. Colleen Morley to come back a second time. She spoke for us back in 2019. And in fact, there was so much information on the presentation that we asked her to come back a second time. And she's gonna be speaking about post. The Pulse form is a form that the physician order for life-sustaining treatment. So this is a, an order that the doctor actually writes up with you if you are towards the end of your life, and it spells out exactly what you want for yourself and your, your, wishes. Um, your wishes. So it was fabulous information, and she is coming back out on... July 23rd to talk about this. She's going to be doing it virtually though. Virtually, yes, I'm sorry. She is going to be doing it virtually. And we are hoping to be back in person in August, provided things start coming around and we're able to do this head on. So, so we are really looking forward to having you guys back in. That's August 27th. Yes. And the featured speaker was W.M. Schwartz, and they are confirmed. I spoke with them yesterday. So they'll be coming in. You again uh, had asked us, the seniors in Orland Park had asked us to bring in somebody that speaks about insurances for, for house and for cars, umbrella policies, cyber security policies, all those things um, that you need when you're, you're um, needing insurance. So uh, both Gary and um, the owner um, will be coming in and will be speaking on all of those needs. And they're going to bring some handouts and some information, little giveaways and whatever. So it is our intention to have everybody live back here at the fire district. Everybody's on August crossing 27th. everything you have on your body because in person is better than is so much nicer and then watch out um in about three weeks time you'll get the invitation through zoom again to be on the um, virtual meeting august 27th with dr colleen morley and then just to finish off on a high note today because it's it's there's so much negativity out there today and with covid and everybody you know being stuck at home betsy and i wanted to share some really good news with everybody so we have been working hard during this pandemic since we cannot get, I personally can't get into the schools. So Ashling and I have been working very hard to get this amazing status through our town. And we are now one of 11 towns in the state of Illinois that are now dementia friendly. So at one of our next meetings, but we're gonna wait till we're in person. We want to discuss how everybody in town could be dementia friends, which in turn, you could become a dementia champion, which in turn helps us promote dementia awareness throughout our Orland Park community. So this is a huge deal. We are going to start navigating our way through our task force that we have come up with. Um, the library, our state senator, our representative, our um, the state. So let's just to explain to the these. seniors that are listening. Uh, the, the DFA is Dementia Friendly America status. And in order to be a dementia friendly community, as a village, we have to apply. It was a long, long process. And through that process, we had to gather a task force that Betsy is explaining about. And the task force consists of all of the people that are in this community that can help any seniors in this community 
age in place and live gracefully uh, with dementia and they will be welcomed in all of these entities such as the banks, the hospitals, the doctor's offices, the, the grocery stores, the restaurants. So, so the whole part of being dementia friendly community is that we reduce the stigma and we educate and not necessarily educate the people who have dementia but we educate the families uh, who are living here in our community that have somebody with a form of dementia who sadly sometimes stay at home um, because of the stigma that's attached to dementia. So this task force that we have gathered and actually plows um, officer uh, Kois and, and Kerry talked about plows. We actually have a member of the plows um, council coming in to sit on that task force as well. And we have the police department, we have the fire department, we have a hospice company, we have uh, nurses, we have plows, we, we have, have myself you. and many, many others in the community. And collaboratively together, we are going to figure out how can we make Orland Park a better place for our seniors in general, but most specifically those with a form of dementia. So it's really, really exciting to, first of all, have gotten the status right. and now uh, let the games begin, so to speak, because we're going to need volunteers from you, the seniors, through conversations and coffee. We'd like to have some volunteers uh, that are seniors that are willing to help us spread the word and help us spread the resources and just to help us in general in the community to get the word out there and embrace um, the people that have dementia. I, I don't know if you know the statistics, but every 67 seconds a person is diagnosed with dementia and we have 10,000 seniors who turn 65 every day. So those two entities meeting together, we definitely need to have more awareness in the community uh, both for the cognitively fine folks and for the families that have a loved one with dementia. So I'll just uh, read to you exactly what being part of the national network is so that you have a, a really good understanding. Um, dementia Friendly America is a national network of communities, organizations and individuals seeking to ensure that communities across the United States are equipped to support people living with dementia and their caregivers. Dementia Friendly Communities foster the ability of people living with dementia to remain in their communities and for them to engage and thrive on a day-to-day -day basis. Dementia Friendly America is administered by the National Association of Area Agencies on Aging. So that kind of just gives you a little idea of, of what this is. And let me tell you, this is a national movement. It's not just happening here in Illinois. There are many, many, many states that are, are, are taking this piece on because of the rise of folks that have this disease. So clearly education and resources yeah. is very much something that everybody is working on throughout it, the states. It's really huge in Great Britain right now and has been actually for quite a while. So they kind of took it from Great Britain and brought it through to America and here we are. And we're happy to listen to any ideas and yeah. things of that nature that you have because just like with conversations and coffee, we're here to serve you, our seniors. Of course, you've put your time in, you've paid your taxes. We want to be able to give you the resource and information that you need uh, to live safely in place. And hence, that was one of the reasons why we had Officer Kois and Kerry come on today, because it's very important that we all work together for the betterment of our community. And as Bensi had said earlier, anybody can be a dementia friend. You don't need to have, you know, a college education to be a dementia friend. Anybody can be a dementia friend. And we're going to, uh, in August, when everybody comes back, we're going to spend maybe half of the time that we're here together after our insurance folks do their presentation, we're going to show you how you can become a dementia friend. There's no pressure on anybody to be one, but it is really nice for people to sign up and to do it. And then from there, you can become a dementia champion. And then you, as a volunteer on our task force, can go out and do little presentations in the library or in the senior lunches yeah. to mm -hmm. explain to people as a community what we're doing. And anybody who knows myself and Betsy, you know that we're big components of, or proponents of community and having value in the community for our seniors. So if you have some compassion and a loving bone in your body and are looking to volunteer, we want you on our task force. 
We want you to be one of our dementia friends. And just so you know, what will be involved in the task force, we'll probably meet about six times a year. We're working on the schedule now. Everybody that signs up will have uh, those dates in advance. So we will book all of that out. And we're thinking probably every other month, right? Certainly. To start at yeah, least. Certainly um, six meetings a year for the first year because we have a lot of goals and a lot of missions and a lot of things we want to accomplish. And then maybe next year when we get it all rocking and rolling, maybe we will go to maybe once every 90 days or something like that. But a great way to get involved. My parents yeah. always have to say, you have to be involved, right? Yep. And we're on a mission. We so, are. We are. And please you know, just, join our mission just, with us. Just to share, I mean, you, those of you that know me, you know, maybe you do know this, maybe you don't, but my mom, you know, had dementia and, and we love to take our mother out. And, and sometimes when, when we would go out, you know, people used to stare and, and people used to say, I wonder, you know, what's wrong with her, but they never asked. They just stared, making me feel uncomfortable. And I'm sure my mother, and this is part of what we're trying to do that we're going to do training in the community to teach uh, our, 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 our residents to what to look for. So, so how you can really recognize somebody that has a form of dementia if they're with their caregiver and to embrace that and maybe say hello, are you having a good day as opposed to staring or, or walking away. So lots of exciting things uh, going ahead uh, in the next year here. We, we, we are going fast and furious. We have our mission. And our resolution day is coming up in now November. You want to explain what that is? Because yep. that's being so, put off. Our Senate, back on May 9th, we had chosen a resolution day to make dementia part of our community. So because of the pandemic that was pushed off, we have now chosen a new date of November 14th. And that whole week before November 14th, we will do some kind of education on dementia and that specific day, we are going to have a dementia-friendly health fair, and then the senator and our state rep are gonna come out and welcome our town, and we are now officially gonna become dementia-friendly, and it's going to be a huge deal with our fire department, and all of our firefighters are in the process of being trained to be certified dementia um, first responders, so they will know what more to look for. But there's a ton of information that we want to share. Obviously, we want to do this in person where it's a little up close and personal, and, and we'll give you more details as they pan out. But we are really excited about this, and we hope that you guys take on this adventure with us. We want to make Orland Park a great place to be. Right. So and more specifically to, to live and to age in place. Mm -hmm. Now on that, talking about keeping you cognitively fit, we're gonna end with a quiz. And you can give us your answers through email. Betsy will share the sheet with you. You can email your answers to e.dine at oralandfire.org or you can send your answers to me at information at ashlingcare.com. So here is the question, okay? Name the five US presidents that had beards during their time in office. We're not giving you the answers today. Let me call out that question again. Name the five US presidents that had beards during their time in office. Okay, and I can hear you all screaming all around Orland Park saying, ask me, ask me, ask me. Mail in through email your answers and we will have a little prize for those folks that get this right when we see you hopefully for real in person live on August 27th here at the fire district. At but you cannot look this answer up. You just have to know it. Of course they're going to look it up. That's what <laughs> Google is for. I had to look up the answer. <laughs> I don't expect Price anybody. For those that know I don't expect anybody to know the uh, answer offhand, but that will keep your minds active and keep you fit until we see you again in person. So tell your friends about Dr. Colleen Morley. She'll be teaching you how to get the post form filled out. 
She will be speaking via Zoom virtual, just like we are today, and that will be on July 23rd. If you have any questions, Betsy, what is the number here at the fire department that they can call Joni to get information? You could call 708-349-0074. And if it's a question that you need to ask me specifically, just ask Joan at the front desk to speak with Betsy and she will send you back to my extension. Okay, so we hope that everybody has a great rest of the day and of the week. And have a good weekend. Everybody stay safe, be alert. Thank you again to Officer Steve Coyce and Officer Carrie Kelly. And we will see you all for sure in August. So thanks everybody. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your day. Bye bye.